People often integrate a phase noise plot to get a measure of phase jitter. But that phase jitter is just a single number. What if you want to identify ways that you can minimize that number? We're going to give you a technique today to analyze phase noise plot and understand the dominant source of phase jitter by inspection. An ideal sine wave doesn't have any noise on it and appears in the frequency spectrum as an impulse function. When we add a phase error term, phi of t, we get phase modulation. And in the frequency spectrum, this adds aprons around the impulse function. If we zoom in on a single sideband of that apron and normalize the y-axis to units of dBc per hertz, then we have a phase noise plot as shown here. Sources of noise in the phase noise plot can be grouped into three distinct regions. The close and offset frequency region is dominated by the resonator and oscillation circuitry and the influence that the environment has on those elements. The far out offset frequency range is dominated by all of the things that go into making up the noise floor of the device the most dominant of which is usually the output buffer. If the device includes a phase lock loop to synthesize a new output frequency, then the phase lock loop includes multiple elements that combine to create a characteristic hump as shown here. If we integrate the phase noise plot, then we're converting the spectral broadening in the frequency spectrum into a time domain quantity called phase jitter that has units of RMS seconds this phase jitter quantifies the variation of phase modulation in the time domain as illustrated here. The integral of the phase noise plot is proportional to the area underneath the phase noise curve. But since the phase noise curve is plotted on a log scale, it's not exactly intuitive which region in any given plot dominates the integral. To build this intuition, we'll use minus 10 dB per decade line. What's interesting about this line is that equally log spaced regions below this line have the same integration value. Here we're shown a value of 4.3 radians RMS. If we change the log spacing to something arbitrary, as shown here, we still have the same value underneath each equally log spaced region, even though the value has changed. The important thing is that it is the same value for each equally spaced log region. We can use this knowledge to draw a minus 10 dB per decade line above our phase noise plot and lower it until it intersects and passes through slightly the phase noise curve. The region that it intersects first is going to be the region that dominates the integral by inspection. This is because it identifies the region of the phase noise curve that appears above the minus 10 dB per decade line first and therefore includes more area underneath it. To implement this knowledge, we first apply a system filter to filter out those regions of the phase noise curve that our system doesn't observe. And then we draw a minus 10 dB per decade line above the phase noise curve and then lower it until it intersects the curve and then identify the region that it first intersects. This is the region of the phase noise curve that dominates the phase jitter value. So if we want to spend money to improve the design, where do we spend it? Clearly, if we're looking at the noise processes in this curve, we've identified the dominant noise source to be the phase lock loop. So improving the other areas such as the oscillation circuitry and the noise floor won't have any impact. Let's look at a different application using a different oscillator. In this case, the application is concerned in an offset frequency range of 100 hertz to 3 megahertz. So we draw our line, we lower it until it intersects the curve, and identify the far out offset frequency region to be the dominant source of phase jitter. So to improve this design, we can improve the noise in the output buffer, for example. If we look at a third application oscillator combination, which is concerned with a frequency range between 1 hertz and 10 kilohertz, then we can follow the same analysis and show that for this system, the close-in phase noise dominates. And therefore, the resonator oscillator circuit combination with the environment is the dominant noise process that would need to be minimized in order to lower the overall phase jitter number. In conclusion, you can determine the dominant source of phase jitter from a phase noise plot by inspection by isolating the region of interest in the phase noise curve, drawing a minus 10 dB per decade line above the curve, lowering it until it intersects the curve, and then identifying the point of intersection, which will help to identify the dominant source of jitter. I hope this has been helpful. If you'd like to learn more, please visit learning.sidetime.com.